Many Democrats still blame outside forces for Clinton's loss, suggesting that Mr. Trump's voters made choices based on bigotry and hatred. But an interesting op-ed in the New York Times calls them out, saying Mr. Trump won despite his controversial comments, not because of them. That piece reads in part, quote, Bluntly put, much of the white working class decided that Mr. Trump could be a jerk. Absent any other champion, they supported the jerk they thought was more on their side, that is, on the issues that most concerned them. Joining us now, the author of those words, David Paul Kuhn. He's a political analyst and author of The Neglected Voter, White Men and the Democratic Dilemma, and the political novel as well. What makes it worthy? David, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So you don't buy this idea that, I don't know, angry white voters put Donald Trump in the White House? No. And in fact, what's so troubling about that, that it came from the former president, Bill Clinton, was that it was very full circle. In 1994, Republicans barnstormed Congress. And this term, this trope, angry white male, was invented from 1980 to 1994. It was used about 12 times in the mainstream media. In the year following the 1994 landslide, it was used over 1,500 times. And so to hear Bill Clinton now having to explain his wife's loss and citing anger, it's not only full circle, but it shows a lack of sympathy that the Democrats certainly extend to other groups. Well, and, and she sort of suggested uh, in that deplorables comment, I mean, she said half of Donald Trump's supporters fit in a basket of deplorables. So, and then she goes on to name racism and, you know, all kinds of isms. Uh, that suggests that a quarter of the voting public is, is, you know, racist or homophobic or whatever. So not only is that bad politics, but it's, 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 Contrary to liberalism, right? So why were the Democrats so offended in 2012 by Mitt Romney's 47% comment? Why? Because it assumed the worst about Democrats. It said, we're giving gifts to Democrats, and that's why big government's giving gifts, and that's why they're voting Democratic. In the same way, Hillary Clinton's comments assumed the worst about Republicans. And for the, Republic for the Democratic Party, this is really a dangerous tendency. Every time there's a the making of a Republican president, it's always assumed to be the worst in voters, whether it's fear or racism or sexism. You've done quite a bit of picking apart of the voting patterns, the, you know, the, the after polling, if you will. And you found some interesting things about, you know, people's attitudes about Donald Trump when it regards, as regards women, for instance. They didn't necessarily like the things they heard about him. In fact, they, they deplored them, but they still voted for the guy in large part. That's because they weren't voting for the most decent candidate. This is the point I try to make in the uh, opinion piece. They were voting for the candidate they felt was their champion. And Democrats know very well what it's like to overlook faults in their champions as they, learned, as they practiced with Bill Clinton in the 1990s when Democrats, and particularly feminists, overlooked Bill Clinton's controversial behavior with women and stood by their candidates, notably to the greatest extent during the Lewinsky scandal. You point out in this piece one in five voters did not have a particularly favorable view of either candidate, but you say if voters who disapproved of both candidates had divided evenly between them, Mrs. Clinton would have won. So again, they're overlooking something that they didn't like in Donald Trump to vote for. Not only that, but these voters were actually disproportionately white males. And what's interesting about this is that here we have a, a, a swath of voters who clearly are estranged from both parties. But why did they vote overwhelmingly for Donald Trump? Well, because he was the the vote against the status quo, a status quo still not working out for them. And as the Democratic Party was closer to its roots in the FDR era, closer to its working class roots, then perhaps Hillary Clinton wouldn't have been in this position, nor the Democratic Party. And I think that the introspection that should catalyze from this outcome uh, is just not seen in the, modern, in the Democratic Party since the election. Obviously, uh, Republicans were hugely disappointed when, you know, Mitt Romney lost and John McCain before him when Barack Obama won two consecutive turns. But I don't remember the kind of visceral anger uh, that's being directed at Donald Trump. Is, is my memory that short or do you well, see you're it the right, same way? but I don't want to let the candidate off. I'm defending the voters. Okay. Because I, there's, I think it's objectively true that Donald Trump said controversial, and that's in some sense a gentle word, yeah. on many issues, controversial words, tweets, and he certainly antagonized the Democratic base on multiple occasions. But the key is you necessarily should not assume the worst in your opposition. 
In other words, just because you lost the election, it doesn't mean you lost it because your opposition saw was voting for the uh, the worst attributes of, of of their belief system. In other words, big, big, they didn't get they didn't get the best of you because of the worst in them. And I think both parties do this, and unfortunately, the Democratic Party is doing this now. And often, I would say, liberal liberal elites yeah. don't realize they're punching down. They think they're punching up when they're attacking the white working class, but they're actually punching down. They, they and I think that they should consider that notion. Democrats didn't lose because voters are bigoted. That sums it up. Indeed. All right, David Paul Kuhn, thank you. Thank you.